So let me focus you on two subjects that um, are important for trying to figure out the economy going forward. I'm very fond of perhaps overclaiming, um, but making a strong claim for physics that physics gave us uh, atomic devices and nuclear power and ended World War II defi definitively. It gave us uh, the semiconductor, the World Wide Web, theoretical physicists invented molecular biology, uh, the communications revolution. All of these things came out of physics. And uh, you could make the argument that physics has been really underrated as powering the world economy. On the other hand, it's very strange to me that we had the three-dimensional structure of DNA in 53. We had the genetic code 10 years later. And we've had very little in the way of, let's say, gene therapy uh, to show for all of our newfound knowledge. Now, I have no doubt that we are learning all sorts of new things, to your point about specialization in biology. But the translation hasn't been anything like what I would have imagined uh, for physics. So it feels like somehow we're in a new orchard and we're spending a lot of time exploring it, but we haven't found the low-hanging fruit in biology. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of exhausted the physics orchard because what we found is so exotic that, it, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's two black holes colliding or, you know, a third generation mm -hmm. of matter or quark substructure, we haven't been able to mm -hmm. use these things. Are we somehow between revolutions? Well, I, th I, I would say the question of what's going on in bi I'm, I wouldn't bet, I wouldn't, I'd be pessimistic on physics generally. So that's me, sort of be well. my bias on that one. Um, biology, I continue to think we could be doing a lot more. We could be making a lot more progress. And, uh, you know, the pessimistic version is that, you no know, biology is just somehow it's much harder than physics. And therefore, um, therefore, it's been slower going. The uh, the more optimistic one is that you know, the, the culture is just broken. We have we've had very talented people go into physics. You go into biology if you're if you're less talented. You know, it's sort of like uh, you can sort of think of it in Darwinian terms. You, you can think of biology as a selection for people with bad math genes. You know, if, you, if you're if you're good at math, you go into physics. You go into math or physics or at least chemistry. Um, and uh, and and biology we sort of selected for. Um, you know, all of these people who were um, somewhat, somewhat less talented. So that might be, that might be a cultural explanation for, uh, for why it's been, been slower progress. But I mean, we, we had people from physics, we had like Teller and Feynman and Crick. There's no shortage of, I mean, you know, to, to my earlier point, molecular biology anyway, was really founded by physicists um, more than, in, more than any other thing, I think. Um, why is it that in an era where physics is stagnating, we don't see these kind of minds? Like, I'm a little well, skeptical of that of that theory. Well, I, I, I I'm not, <coughs> I'm not so sure. Like, if you, you know, if you're a string theory person or even sort of an applied experimental physicist, yeah. uh, I don't think you can that easily reboot into biology. I mean, these, these the, you know, these disciplines have gotten sort of more. Um, more rigid. Um, it's 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 pretty hard to to transfer from one area to another. I had I, you know, I when when I was an undergraduate, you still had some you know older professors who were polymaths who knew a lot about a lot of different things. Right. This is this is I think the way one should really think of you know Watson and Crick or Feynman or you know or Teller. They they you know they they were certainly world class in 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 their field, but also like incredible in, in a they lot were of highly fields. transgressive and, um, and, and, you know, the, the, the cultural or institutional rule is no polymaths allowed. You know, wow. you can, you can be, you can be narrowly specialized. Yeah. Um, and if you're interested in other things, you better keep it to yourself and not tell people because if you say that you're, you know, you're interested in computer science and also music or studying the Hebrew Bible, um, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's just, uh, that, that must mean you're just not very serious about computer science. Well, so I, I totally want to riff on, on this point because I think you've hit the nail on the head. To my way of thinking, the key problem is if you go back to our original mm -hmm. uh, contention, which is, is that there is something universally pathological about the stories mm -hmm. that every institution predicated on growth has to tell about itself um, when things are not growing. The biggest danger is that somebody smart inside of the institution will start questioning things and speaking openly. 
And it seems like- The polymaths this- would be the people who could connect the dots and, and say, you know, there's not that much going on in my department. There's not much going on in this department over here. Not that much going on in this department over there. And those people are very, very dangerous. You know, one of my uh, one of my friends uh, uh, studied uh, physics at Stanford in the late '90s. Um, his advisor was uh, this professor at Stanford, Bob Laughlin, who, um, sure. you know, in the late '90s, um, was a brilliant physics guy. Late '90s, he gets a Nobel Prize in physics, and he suffers from the the supreme delusion that now that he has a Nobel Prize, he has total academic freedom and he can do anything he wants to. And he decided to direct it at, um, you know. I mean, there are all these areas you should, probably shouldn't go into. You should, probably shouldn't question climate science. You should, there are all these things one, one should be careful about. But he went into an area far more dangerous than all of those. He was convinced that there were all these uh, people in the, in the university who um, were doing fake science, who were wasting government money on fake research that was was not really going anywhere. And he started by you know, investigating other departments. He started with the biology department at Stanford University. And you can imagine this ended catastrophically for Professor Laughlin. You know, his uh, graduate students couldn't get PhDs. He no longer got funding. Nobel uh, Peace Prize, uh, sort of Nobel Prize in Physics, no protection whatsoever. Yeah, Julian Schwinger um, fell out of favor with the physics community despite being held in its highest regard and having a Nobel Prize. And he used the epigram in a book where he wanted to redo quantum field theory around something he called source theory. He said, if you can't join them, beat them. And I think it comes as a shock to all of these people that there is no level you can rise to in the field that allows you to question the assumptions of that field. Right. It's it's like, you know, you're sort of proving yourself. You're, you know, you're getting your PhD, you're getting your tenured position. You're, and, and, and then at some point, you think you would think that you've proven yourself, and you can you can uh, talk about the whole and not just the parts. Well, but you're never allowed to talk about more than the parts. You know, like the um, the person in the university context, the cl- or the class of people who are supposed to talk about the whole. Right. I would say are university presidents because they are presiding over the whole of the university, and they should be able to speak to um, what the nature of the whole is. What sort of progress the whole is making is the what is the health of the progress of the whole, and uh, and um, you know we 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 don't you know we certainly do not pick university presidents who think critically about these these questions at all. Well, I remember um, discussing uh, with a, a president of a very highly regarded university. Uh, he came to me. He said, "Can you explain how your friend Peter Thiel thinks?" Because I just had a conversation with him and I could not convince him that the universities were doing uh, fantastically in this university in particular. Like, how does he come to this conclusion? And I said, well, look, P- Peter uh, doesn't come uh, you know, with a PhD, but let me speak to you in your own language. I started going department by department talking about the problems of stagnation. It was very clear that there was no previous experience with any kind of informed person making such an argument. I mean, it was, this was a no, zero-day exploit. But it's, but it's all, yeah, but it's, but, you know, in, in some sense, if you're a president of a university, you know, you you should, um, you probably don't want to talk to people that dangerous. You want to avoid them and you don't want to have such disruptive thoughts because yeah. you have to, you know, convince the government or alumni or whoever to keep donating money that everything's, you know, everything's wonderful and and great, and uh, and um, you no, know, I think one has to go back quite a long time to um, to even identify any university presidents in the United States who said things that were distinctive or interesting or or powerful. Well, you know, there was you know there was Larry Summers at Harvard, you know, a decade and a half ago, and tried to do like the most minuscule critiques imaginable, and got you know crucified. But uh, you know, I don't, I don't think of you know I don't think of Summers as a particularly revolutionary thinker. Well, he he was possessed of an idea that the intellectual elite, in which he undoubtedly mm-hmm. saw himself uh, a part of, had the right mm-hmm. to transgress boundaries. Mm-hmm. And I think what's stunning about this is the extent to which this breed of outspoken. Mm-hmm. Um, disruptive intellectual has no place left inside of the system from which to speak. But it's, you know, but there's, it's, it's not that surprising. Like in a, in a, in a healthy system, 
you can have wild dissent and it's not threatening because everyone knows the system is healthy. True. In an unhealthy system, um, the dissent becomes much more dangerous. Okay. So, uh, so you know, this is, and I, I think that's, it, it's, 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 it's not that surprising. You know, the, there's always a, you know, one, one riff I have on this is always, you know, if you, if you think of a left-wing person as someone who's critical of the structures of our society, right. um, there's a sense in which we have almost no left-wing professors left. I mean, you know, that's the, right. In, in the so like in, in, Noam Chomsky <laughs> still is still there as sort of a last remnant of some clade yes. that or no longer exists. Le left wing in the sense of let's say just being critical of the institutions they're a part of. Right. And there may be some that are you know much older. So if you're maybe in your 80s, we can you know we can pretend to ignore you, or you know it's just what happens to people in their 80s. Sure. And um, but uh, but I don't I don't see you know younger professors in their let's say 40s who are. Um, deeply critical of the, of the university structure. I think it's just, um, it's just not, you know, you can't have that. It's like, again, if you come back to something as, as, um, as reductionist as the, uh, ever escalating student debt, right. You know, the bigger the debt gets, you can sort of think, what is the 1.6 trillion? What does it pay for? And in, in a sense, it pays for $1.6 trillion worth of lies about how great <laughs> the system is. And so the more the debt goes, the crazier the system gets, but also the more you have to tell the lies and these, these things sort of go together. No, it's, it's not a stable sequence. At some right. point this breaks. Um, you know, again, I would, I would bet on, you know, a decade, not a century. Well, the, 